find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Ready for what's coming. What is coming? The answers. Hello, Internet. Today is January 27, 2015, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute. Where we talk everything movies from the week before, current, and still yet to come. Uh, I am Rambling Mango, aka Malango. <laughs> That's and I you. Am, That's you. I, or yeah. Mongo, as I heard today. Who said that? Oh no, um, he actually said it right. No, he, or he said Malongo. Yeah, Mal- he said it the way my parents say it. Mal- Is it. Oh, so he says it like the correct ethnic he says way it the to say ph- it, phonetically correct way. I say Malongo. Well, wait, wait. They 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 named you. you Shouldn't, say Malongo. So it should be like I say Malongo. That's really how it kind of goes. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Basically, it took me a second. To be like, oh, they're talking about him. <laughs> Cord killers. If anybody, he was on this week again with the uh, movie draft. You contributed. I didn't have the video version up to see what you had contributed though but yep. why aren't you plugging the show that's not even me like i sent him a whole nice email okay and that's the only thing he he spoke on like isn't your signature like lengo host of the rambling movie minute or something like that yeah but to be honest I no man you gotta hustle <laughs> you gotta hustle this stuff man you gotta get the word All out there. You're people. getting on the biggest show about movies and cord cutting. And the biggest podcast, one of the highest Patreon supported podcasts. And you can't put a mention in your email. I know, right? On the on the hope that maybe they'll mention you. They're all about that kind of stuff, man. I should do that. They did have somebody mention something about their on their Reddit page that was very close to like cord cutting. Do it. Do it, man. Yeah. I have some stuff. I don't know. That, Guess you got to wait for the next movie draft. Well, I, it's coming up. I, I, know, also, I, I have like a lot of stuff I have to finish. Uh, the person that was speaking to me, because I am in studio right now, was uh, Sorg of Sorgatron Media. What's up? Checking out some of our sponsor. So I'm not hosting on this one. You, you're, you're eating our sponsor right mm-hmm. now. Is that Thank you. You're stuffing on Broadway. in your mouth. Also, our uh, New York connection, Mad Mike. I still want some pizza. <laughs> this isn't fair. This isn't fair. Every Tuesday, I see Sorg eating delicious slice on Broadway pizza. And I just sit here and I'm like, wow. <laughs> it isn't slice on Pittsburgh. It's in Carnegie. But no, I didn't say it my way. But it's very delicious pizza. It is pretty delicious. It's Hi. so delicious. Hi. It's so delicious. Sword can't even speak while he eats. That's how good it is. I would hope not. That's very rude. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, Mad Mike, you're the one who posted the trailer for this week, and I thought it was freaking. Uh, actually, my comments for it were, I am. It was something like I am pleasantly surprised, or something like that. Or, I'm excited. It was very low key. I felt. Yeah, uh, which I really enjoyed. We didn't. We we really like. We got a lot of the kind of pre uh, stuff going on, you know. Um, but uh, it, it, you know, it really kind of shows like more like how they get their powers. I guess you know whatever this mission is, it looks different than a space faring mission that that we're used to. I, I, I'm guessing they're going to do a little bit of dimension hopping. Maybe they hop right into the de- negative zone or something. Um, looking by these pods, mm-hmm. but uh, I'm I'm very excited about this. I love that they they plug. Hey, I, we're the studio that brought you X Men: Days of Future Past. Yeah. forget about Wolverine. That's what kind of sold it for me because I was like, oh wait, if they're doing this, it's gonna be it's gonna be like deep. It's gonna probably have like a good story attached to it, mm-hmm. where it's gonna intertwine. It's gonna connect. Um, two characters that I really like in this movie, I am still thrown off by. Why? Uh, I don't know. Well, recently I just watched uh, Whiplash, okay. so I saw Miles uh, Taylor in that, and he just doesn't 
I don't know. He doesn't and, and come off. And who's he playing in this one? For he's those who don't know, Mr. Fantastic. He's playing Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. So he's playing Reed uh, Richards. And everybody seems super young for their roles too. Yeah. It which, just... which is fine. It's their origin. They can be a little younger, and, I guess. Mike and Ben doesn't seem like big. Guy. Right. Like before he's transformed into right. thing. I don't know if I necessarily. I don't know. Yeah, like the character casting seems a little weird. I, I'm going to just be curious how they play off the uh, Sue and Johnny Storm because uh, the other character, Michael B. Jordan, who I really like, is black. Yeah, and and their brother well, and sister. And their brother and sister, this is a new age. It could, you know, you never yeah. know, you know. It, it well, they, be... showed, they showed their father. They Franklin do. Storm's in the trailer. Um, it looked like Sue's adopted because he is also black. Really? Really? Yeah. Interesting. That's what it looks like. Okay. Okay. Um, but, I mean, the overall feel, like, I, I think I'm excited for this. Um, I know they said that, I hope, because they're saying that they're going to do uh, a feature, uh, the first trailer. I don't know if this is considered a teaser or the first trailer, but they're saying that it's going to be in, in the front of uh, Kingsman, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm going to watch tonight. So I'm hoping it's there. But usually with these pre-release uh, screenings, you don't get a lot of stuff. we usually yeah. don't get any trailers. No. Um, I wouldn't suppose if maybe we see a Fantastic Four trailer during the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, that would that would actually. I, be I did because that's this. <laughs> yeah, Sunday is on. Seems to make sense to me. But I, I'm not. I'm not panning the trailer. I, I'm going to give it more time. I don't exactly know if I prove or not yet because we didn't really see much of anything like powers being used or anything like that. There's like a brief shot of Ben Grimm like as the thing, but only from the back. There's a brief shot of Johnny Storm catching on fire. Yeah. There's like a blink and you miss it shot of a of uh, force field being projected by Sue Storm, and you don't see Doom. Yeah. Also, who's doing the voiceover for this trailer? Is it Doom? Because I don't, I don't know. It didn't really tell like a cohesive thing for me. It's just like, hey, they're doing a thing, and they get powers. Like. I don't know. It just seems like a, tra a teaser of something more to me. Like it didn't grab me like like other first trailers for movies have grabbed me. I also know that there was a lot of controversy over uh, Josh Josh Trank, the director on this movie, that Fox wasn't too happy with him. I don't really think. I don't know if that's what rushed the teaser, but I mean, at this point, I think the any backlash that I was reading doesn't really seem like i mean personally for me i don't care so it seems like we're still getting a movie it seems like it's it's still well, coming well there there has to be a movie because otherwise fox loses the rights for the fantastic four so that kind of still has to happen but uh i don't uh, know and i don't know maybe sue like the actress or sue storm the one scene you see of her she she just looks odd. Yeah, the like she, like she doesn't like. It's weird to say Jessica Alba looked more like Sue Storm than this actress did, whose name I can't remember right. Uh, right Kate Kate head, Mara, but... I think her name is Kate Mara. Kate Mara yes. Um, funny thing about her, I looked her up. She was in Iron Man two as one of the U.S. Marshals. So I don't know if that I don't think that's going to be tied in because it's technically the same universe, but I don't think they're going to. No, it technically in. it's not the same universe. That's the whole. That's the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, I, I, Fox, yeah, I guess so. The Fox superhero universe is different than the Marvel one. So. That's true. Uh, box office news. So, if I had told you American Sniper was going to pull in two hundred freaking million dollars. Would you believe me? <laughs> I'm shocked. Absolutely shocked. It got the Oscar buzz I'm... for sure. Um, I think it's a really interesting statement about where we're at um, as far as our opinion on wars and warriors and such. Um, 
Is it just like American Patronage? Have you like, watched it? Yeah, I saw My it. My wife has watched it twice. Oh, wow. Twice. Well, you made sure, well went with a group. He, she goes out with a group of girls that go watch war movies. Like, their date movies have included Act of Valor. Uh, was that? Uh, let's say Team Hero 6. It's not right. Uh, Steel Team 6, was it? Mm-hmm. Um, like, that's the kind of movies that they go to see. Hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Her comment was, she's ne- from the first showing, she's never gone to a movie where the credits started rolling and theater was just silent. Yeah, that's that's incredible. I, I wonder if it's the same reaction I had, where it's like a little bit more than halfway through the movie. I'm like, oh crap, this is based off the real guy, right? And then you know how it's going to end, and you're kind of thinking, are they really going to show that ending? Right. right. Or... And not to get into a spoiler, I, I only know by proxy myself. Didn't watch it myself, um, but the reaction. Plus, it, it is it is gaining a little bit of controversy because of. Um, uh, I actually had a very interesting conversation uh, yesterday with uh, a guy that I work with that who is Muslim, mm-hmm. and his kids are like like one of his sons who's like oh like I, I think he's in his twenties some somewhere and he's in and and like that idea you know of well, well people, my friends are calling me terrorist now because the movie's big you know like like that kind of thing so I think that. You know, and then not any further on comment on that part of it, but I think that discussion that's been happening, on top of you know we want to support the troops and see you know and and that kind of thing, I think that together as as kind of plus there's really nothing else to watch. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, I mean, just all together. I was going to say there's really nothing else that has come out. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. it is it is an interesting, thought provoking movie either way, whether you agree with how it's presented or not, or or anything like that. Um, and I think that is just just. All, all swirled together. I mean, it was the subject of uh, last night's uh, nightly show. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean the the movie that they're beating out for highest grossing R rated movie of all time, right? Was the Passion <laughs> of the Christ, right? Was the Passion of the Christ, and I don't. It doesn't, you know, take a political scholar to think that maybe they have similar demographics. <laughs> it's all about religion <laughs> and guns, right? So, yep. There you go. Yeah, I mean the next Plus, closest. Plus, the fact movie. that there's so much controversy around it is only giving the movie more buzz. Like, exactly. Like so Seth true. Rogen came out and said that he thought it was just like the uh, like the fake movie in in Glorious Bastards, where it's just propaganda. And right. Right. Considering right. the director appeared at the Republican National Convention, kind of difficult to argue that. Mm. <laughs> yes. I mean. I've, I've been watching a lot of Bill Maher, and he's been talking about it every week. So, oh. I haven't seen the movie. I really don't want to see the movie. When you tell me there's a movie that's coming out on Christmas about Rocket Raccoon shooting a kid in the head with a sniper rifle, that's not a movie I have interest in seeing at all. Yeah. No, I, I mean, that's understandable. I mean, I, also, if you look at the next movie down the list, uh, I mean... Compare. I think it was the um... the boy next door is uh, is big for this week, uh, yeah. which well, was the uh, Jer- Jennifer Je- Lopez, right? Yeah, yeah Jennifer, Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer, Jennifer Lopez. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the interview was so awkward when they were talking about this on Daily Show the other day. Um, so but weird. it's it's yeah, it's just kind of then Paddington, which you know any kids, it's like let's see, American Sniper, Boy Next Door, Paddington, it is. Like I'm looking at this as like imitation game taken three wedding ringer. Yeah, there's nothing for kids right now. So so there you go. Mordecai number nine. I didn't expect that to do well. It was too odd. It was, I didn't see that hitting with anybody. Um, Strange magic uh, in at number seven was the other new one from this week. That was this one. I saw one commercial for exactly one commercial for. Now granted, I'm a cord cutter. I watch things on Hulu, and that's where I usually see the ads. Mm-hmm. But um, from the imagination of George Lucas. How was George... Oh yeah, that that's how that's how they start oh. every trailer and I'm like, right. "Oh, really? Nope." Yeah, I think that nope. hurt them sadly. But it just there was nothing behind it. And who put this out? There was this was this through a different distributor. I'm trying to bring it up here. Um it wasn't Disney, that's for sure. I think it was technically Lucas. Buena or? Vista. Was this Buena like Vista. Is Buena Vista? So so it was Disney. Okay. So I mean, was this like the last one they had in the can at Lucas Films when they bought them and and they're just like, oh, they're just it kind of seems like a weird sequel to Epic. It does a little bit, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Because I mean, it looks exactly like Epic, right? Except without humans. 
even on the on the downside to that with Disney buying Lucasfilms and the fact that DreamWorks just closed that uh, one of the big studios on the East Coast, uh, which is going to put like 500 people out of work. Like, um, I don't know. It was a that that's a movie that I don't really know. Like, I feel like with the standards that we have when DreamWorks releases really good movies and Disney releases good movies and Pixar releases good movies. If you if you're producing an animation that you don't think can compete, I don't think it's worth it. Well, I mean, well, listen, you, you're doing you're talking about animation. Animation is such a long tail. You've heard the Pixar story. You know how they basically scrapped that entire movie halfway through production and started started over. Mm-hmm. And, and especially we're talking 3D animation. It's just such such a long tail. Um, there was an interesting comment because uh, I, I know I know DreamWorks has been doing their their series uh, their cartoon series on on uh netflix and they come five episodes at a time and i remember there's one comment from i think an animator says yeah animation takes a damn long time you're getting five episodes at a time yeah sorry you know um i mean this this is a if it's not going the right direction it's like game development at this point if it's not going the right direction you can't just reshoot yeah you know a, as but easily see, as, as I, you could i always wonder about that i always wonder why People say animation takes such a long time, even still in 2015. When you look at South Park, right? Well, okay. Well, nope, but they they have a formula. <laughs> they yeah. have the software. Like it took them a while to like they started with with X, right? And they developed the software that does exactly what they need. And again, it's 3D, right? They so they plug in the uh, things. It's not 3D. It's, it's 2D. I thought it's well. I thought I thought everything's built on no. 3D. Nope, everything's oh, okay. 2D, I, which it, makes it completely different. Of course, 2D will always like. It, it's not even like traditional. Well, it's 2D. computer generated still, right? It, it's like it's like it's like they're some weird professional version well, of what Flash. they use for their 3D generation. If you look, it's very quick. It's mm-hmm. it's rough, mm-hmm. and by the process, everything that they do is stripped yeah. down. Plus, plus, South Park is not good animation yeah love south park it is not good animation it's like yeah, Teen Hunger Force. It's do cheap. have very well animated episodes sometimes yeah eh, like, I mean, you're talking like, about like uh, moments I'm, right yeah it's not like they don't have really sophisticated technology they no. just use it to make simplistic designs i mean basically it's paper they, cut they've had many episodes anime. where they yeah, have like yeah. full 3d animation like, yeah, no I, I don't know malengo as the resident 3d animator you do this in your day job yes um and we see by the time the time the time the day sh- the, the time each week the, this show actually starts how rough that is on you uh as somebody like and you know a bit about the more professional game you know what i'm talking about like how, how hard is it to animate in, in, takes, in this vein it's not even just anime it takes a long time yeah <laughs> 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 I'm just I'm just gonna go with that. Well, I mean, okay, okay. There's some people that I give credit, but in the team setting for a professional uh, produced production, it takes a long time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So again, you got like a, just so uh, just simple math. I don't want to get too much in the math, but 30 frames is one second. Yeah. So if you're it, with computers, you would think, okay, that that helps. But once you start adding in extra geometry, realistic geometry, Cause physics, for every, everything every, else, every frame, every every thirtieth of a second, you have to solve a math problem. Yep, and right. it calculates every triangle right. that's in that scene. Right, right. Hence, yes, animation should get better. But as technology increases, mm-hmm. so does pushing the limit on. What and and you're talking is. about pushing pushing look and style and that geometry versus cost yeah so. the the good the brilliant thing that um south park was able to do was create a system and they use very simplistic uh basically cut out animated characters so but i give them credit um all right so i it's getting very close to when I have to leave. Uh, so <laughs> well, I just... yeah, let's let's uh, let's pick two quick stories here to discuss, and uh, a real quick through what we because we I, I, we we kind of turned uh, the our regular segment into a whole other discussion, which I love I love that. But we, we we'll touch on the story or two here, and uh, get in our way. We'll let you go, Malenko. You got plenty plenty to do. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I'll just say real quick. I love uh, Chris Pratt. I think he's freaking hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, I like what has opened up for him in terms of movies, but 
him as Indiana Jones. What? I kind of think that's pushing it. I, I okay. I, I I think him latching. He's like the next guy that's gonna latch on every franchise available to him. You know. I mean. <laughs> I mean, Which seemingly appears to be every franchise. I mean, this isn't the first one that seemed to... I mean, look at Chris Evans, you know. I mean, he's the guy that's kind of gone from, you know, I don't know, maybe just like skeaky stuff, I don't know. Or even even look at the um, guy that plays Superman that's doing the uh, uh, Adam in, in, in Arrow, right? Mm-hmm. Like, they're guy... Like, I don't know. I, they just like those rules, you know? They're like, I'm a geek. I love doing this. You know, I, I think I think Chris Pratt is one of those guys. Is you that, know? So he's like, I'll be Indiana Jones. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. I, if you were I think Chris most Pratt... People are, I think most people are looking at a movie that had a talking tree and a talking raccoon and saw how much money they made, and they're like, holy shit, no one knew about this. We have Indiana Jones sitting here just waiting to be made again. Remember, we have Jurassic Park just waiting to be made again. Part, Let's throw that guy into established franchises right, and we'll make right. a bajillion dollars. I mean, I mean, we're talking about like Shia LaBeouf kind of went through a similar thing where he was yeah. attached to an Indiana Jones to, and a Transformers. And he seemed like the sidekick, son, something, whatever of every franchise coming out for like four years. To his right? credit, though, I feel like the Indiana Jones and then Transformers – was like a big enough differential of of genre almost. Hey, listen, you're either Indy's son or you're Optimus Prime's little buddy. Well, it's the same thing to me. <sighs> well, I mean, I mean let, let's be fair. The first five minutes of Guardians plays out like Indiana Jones in space. Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. But yeah, the fact it, that it we're going to get you, Jurassic you know, World. You know, some creative guy in Hollywood saw that and was like, Indiana Jones? I think the only thing that irks me is that we we saw him as Indiana Jones. We're going to see him as Indiana Jones in Jurassic World. And now we're just going to, like, let's just make him Indiana Jones. It's just weird. I mean, uh, Empire Online did a, a poll. 54% of the people said, yes, he's a perfect casting. I think it would be. I, I Honestly, honestly, I, I think he would be. I, I like him better there than he is in Jurassic Park. So, but... You know, it's going to be like, so Star-Lord as Indiana Jones, Star-Lord as Jurassic Park, you know. Like, to mm-hmm. me, I, I think he's in people's minds, you know, in that role. Or he's still Andy from Parks and Recreation. Yeah. I can't even imagine this last season. <laughs> well, no, no. He's not oh. Andy anymore because this guy has abs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Well, this last season got weird <laughs> yeah. right off the bat. I mean, that's what I, I'm eager to watch the final season. If, if he's even going to be in a lot of the episodes. Hey, he's been around. No, he's been around. <laughs> We're about three or four episodes in. He's been around. Oh, I mean, he's not man. a huge role, but, you know, there's, there's such a huge cast on that to begin with. It's all about Leslie Nope and... and Ron Swanson. Hmm. It's you know, I mean, I mean that's that's it. You know, we don't even have uh, uh, Rob Lowe around anymore. But anyways, all right. I think I gotta step out before I start getting blasted. Oh, are we gonna do Mike and Mike show? You guys can wrap it up with the we'll Mike do it. and Mike we'll show. We'll do it. We'll wrap it up with story. Mike and Mike show. Hey, what'd you, real quick, what'd you watch this week? I'll name one of the shows that I watched this week. I went and saw the Wedding Ringers. Oh. And uh, it was okay. All right. I I think I agreed with Mad Mike. Um, there were parts in it that made me laugh. Uh, there were parts in it that I was like, okay, that's a uh, far out stretch. But overall, um, it was okay for the people that they had in there. What did you think of the ending? Um, uh, you, are you talking about the fact that they just kind of like spilled the beans and then they all run out and then they're on the plane and that just overall general ending? Eh, mm-hmm. whatever. I mean, <laughs> yes. For what that character was, I guess it's better that he grew a set of balls and stuck up for himself. So I think I'm okay with it. Uh, what's the okay. comedian that was, um, who played the, do you know who I'm talking about? The the comedian girl who played the female. Who, Nick Cummings? Yes. Um, <laughs> I always want to believe that she's going to be funnier than she is. Oh, I like Whitney Cummings. I know, but her show was really I, I think, bad, I think... and I was expecting so much from that. Uh, I, I enjoyed <laughs> I enjoyed the football scene too. Uh, I thought that was hilarious. Um, yes, but yes. Uh, in terms of recommending this movie, I'd say like if you're bored, I would definitely spend like five bucks to go see it in theaters. Or just wait for it to come on HBO or whatever free television. It's or a no, great I, red say, box. 
the red, great red box. Yeah, red box. Actually, that that's a that's true. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Okay. All right, guys. Mike and Mike show. Find All right, us. where it's just us, sir. Thank you for joining us, Malenga. Grab some pizza from Slice on Broadway on your way out. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> all right still rolling here with the mike and mike show hey here's one i know you're probably very excited about david Tennant to play the purple man in the jessica jones netflix series i heard about this on one of my other podcasts mm. i am not familiar with the purple man jessica jones is outside my purview of my comic reading uh i'm actually just getting back into daredevil and this whole De- daredevil's in san francisco these days guys which is really interesting um mm-hmm. and also really awesome because i started reading it while i was visiting san francisco um but anyways so it, it's 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 the purple man it's jessica jones Wh- what is the purple man should we be excited about this well all right i'm excited about it uh just because david Tan- i know he's gonna crush it regardless of what the character is yeah, he's but, david uh, Tennant, sure. you know, uh, the only exposure i've ever had to the purple man and you've ever had to the Purple Man because I know your viewing habits. Uh, the Purple <laughs> that's, Man that's scary. was on an episode stalker. of Avengers. The Purple Man was on an episode of Avengers: Earth's Mightiest Heroes. He was the character who had mind controlled Tony Stark oh. into taking control of New York City. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. Don't remember um, that. Episode. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to get that exact interpretation. I'm assuming probably not. But um, from what I've heard, the, the Purple Man, a.k.a. Kilgrave, is a really kind of sick character. And mm-hmm. it works with the, uh, like the Dan and Dury style that they're, gonna do, get they're going to be doing with Daredevil and Jessica Jones. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, David Tennant, street-level thug with mind control. Yeah, sign me up. I'm in. <laughs> Why not? Why I'm not? absolutely in. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I think the uh, Daredevil series debuts in April, April 10th, it says mm-hmm. here. On, um, it's going to be a nice little birthday present to me from Marvel. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Comicbookresources.com is the source on that one. And also on here, I know you're very excited about this uh, rumor coming up for um, Ghostbusters. I was excited, Sorg. You were? I was. What's, what's, what's different I was. here? Um, oh, we'll because they've cards. actually selected the uh, all female cast. You're not too too crazy about this uh, lineup here. Um, it, it's the guy that did Bridesmaids, first of all. Right. So Paul this really and doesn't I, surprise I me. There. In, I hated Bridesmaids. Okay. I, I hated Bridesmaids. I don't like Melissa McCarthy. Kristen Wiig can be very irritating sometimes. Mm-hmm. I like Leslie Jones. Mm-hmm. I like Kate McKinnon. Mm-hmm. But um, where's Emma Stone? Why Why? Why isn't that a thing you that's never going know. to be happening? You never know. I, I'll be interested. i see how it turns out. I, I, actually, I honestly never watch uh, uh, Wedding Whatever. Um, but uh, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm sure I'll get all into it. I mean, I mean it's I'm such an outs- I mean, it's such an outside. Stuff. It's such an outside concept for a, for a, reboot, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not too far outside, but no. And I, I mean, I'm fine with an all female cast. I think that's a cool idea. Yeah, but uh, like, it's not like Melissa McCarthy has made a lot of really great movies. <laughs> let's face it she hasn't yeah yeah she hasn't Tammy, identity thief those movies are god awful mm-hmm. the heat oh fun I, that, for what they are and like unless she caters her acting more toward bill murray and less towards chris farley uh, I, I I don't even know. Well, you have to be excited at least about this uh, announcement that Emma Watson is going to play Belle in a live-action Beauty and the Beast. Um, Absolutely. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. That is pitch-perfect casting. Mm-hmm. Pitch-perfect. Provided she can sing, which I'm assuming. Well, let's be honest. You know. In the studio, that's how it happens, right? So... Mm-hmm. Well, with that, the only thing that would be, the only thing that would be even cooler to me 
is if they got Maggie Smith somehow to play Mrs. Potts, <laughs> so we'd have like Hermione and Magana go back in the same movie again. <laughs> <laughs> nice nice all right so uh with that uh, okay well we got what malenko watched um uh, mostly this weekend i watched i was catching up a little bit on supernatural uh we watched through mozart in the jungle on amazon prime um because I, I i didn't realize it was one of those that i loved in the pilot season um last time last go around i didn't realize they did a whole series of it um then that's kind of kept me from getting back to transparent unfortunately too but you know that'll be coming up soon uh as soon as i, I find some time for that like i said get into the supernatural we're, we're we're heading up to uh towards the end of the first season of that that's been interesting um and uh jeez uh, the usual flash arrow agent carter you have a lot of that going on here actually you have the rest of my list on your list of things that you watched mike <laughs> yeah i mean Flash Air, I watched a lot of TV. Mm -hmm. I actually played a lot of video games and read some actual books this week. So so I didn't have much time for movies. Plus, nothing at the movie theater really interested me. I think the next movie I'm going to go see is Kingsman. Like, apart from that, I don't think I'm going to see anything before that. Oh, you because... know what? I di I'm sorry to backtrack a moment, but I did watch a movie. I did watch Jack, Ry Jack Ryan. Yeah, Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit. With uh, Chris Pine, oh, okay. the reboot of uh, the old Hunt for Red October, clear and present danger character. Um, it was fun. It's, uh, yeah, there's, just throw those movies out. Because it's, again, reboot. He's, you know, they, they, they show him getting recruited and everything. Um, I mean, it was it was fine. It was it, not a super action movie. It's just one of those kind of spy thrillers. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, it was fun. I I, I, let, I I still haven't watched Wolf on Wall Street, so I, I let the wife say, okay, which one of these do you want? And she picked that one. And it was definitely not my first pick. Um, oh, but... Sorg. Watch Wolf on Wall Street. I know. I need, I need a moment to. I need a moment to. That's it's why I, I mean, so good. So it's easier to do series. <gasps> Spartacus is coming back to Netflix. Such a good series. I only watched the first <laughs> season. Um, it's popping up here. I was trying to remember, so I was trying to pull up my list. Anyways, uh, back to you. Um, I was hoping to see the new Justice League movie that came out today, but I will probably have to talk about that next week. Okay. Because, you know, no, I wasn't able to go out and get it today. But, um, yeah, I mean, I saw a Flash, a uh, really good episode with Captain Cold and Heat Wave. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that they all have names and they're all teaming up <laughs> together. Like, oh, it's really good. Um, Arrow was really good, despite Oliver Queen not really being present for a lot of the episode. Which was an interesting uh, dynamic, I thought. Oh, yeah. I thought it was really, like, it gave more credence to the minor characters, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Because I'm still loving Random Routh as the Atom. Mm -hmm. And I was the guy who really didn't like him as Superman. But as the Atom, it totally works. It absolutely works for me. He was a fun character. He was also... Whoop, Malengo's not on the couch anymore. Hey, hey, Malengo. Um, what do you think? Um, he was a character that popped up on Chuck, and I was a huge fan of Chuck. And he was so much fun on, on that series. He was like the perfect guy. Um, but um, but yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm completely down with that. Uh, I like that we... Again, we're... Uh, again, we're kind of expanding out that universe, right? Like, it feels like I, I know we're not going to get the DC Cineverse, you know, extension kind of thing, but the TV or the, the DC uh, TV averse has been pretty cool so far. So, yeah, um, especially if they add Supergirl in the same world as this. Mm -hmm. And if and they're adding uh, a cartoon yeah. to be set in the same world. I love that. I, I, what was the Vixens? Is it? Yeah, um, set in the same. I think in the, in the promotion that they had, um, they had pictures of a, a an animated Arrow and, and Flash actually in the background. Um, so that that's awesome. I, I love it. I love it. Also, so. uh, sort uh, this this is for several other podcasts. But I downloaded the uh, Arrow uh, DLC for Lego Batman Three. Yeah, it, it's really really funny. <laughs> Because it's Stephen Amell doing the voice of Arrow, and he opens it up like, "My name is Oliver Queen," and he does like a whole Legoized version of his opening speech. Yeah. So who was that? somebody was complaining that like that every one of these shows says, "My name is blah blah blah." It's like yo, you know, it kind of goes back to that. You know, it's somebody's first. Yeah, but have you through. ever read a comic book? Almost every comic book I read 
starts off with one page of backstory. Well, well, well but even that, even, even with that, or look at older ones, um, without the backstory, you're talking about like the, the here's the backstory, what you missed page, or the um, I'm in the action, here's, here's our character, I'm so-and-so, and I'm a mutant, you know, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, both kind of. It's happened. a tried and it's the tried and true formula. Like, like all the Spider-Man movies have started out that way. Yeah, all of them. Like you have, like there's X-Men movies started out that way. Like, it it's it's good establishing. It doesn't take away from anything, and plus, it's part of the opening intro. Like, it's literally an intro. That's what its purpose is for a TV show like that. But oh, Sorg, and I, I, I mentioned this last week before we went on air. I've discovered how to fix Gotham. Okay. Um, I think halfway in every episode of Gotham, whenever the new threat has been revealed or whatever, you have right before you go to commercial, just pause the screen and have the 1960s Batman announcer come on and say, "Will our dynamic detectives?" Rouse out the electrocutioner. Stay tuned. <laughs> so it just like kind of diverts in. Like in your world, he actually becomes Commissioner Gordon yes. and Chief O'Hara. Yes. Yes. Be- because honestly, I don't see that little Bruce Wayne growing mm-hmm. up to anything other than Adam West. Right. Like, like soon he's going to find... He's gonna find out that he has an aunt and Harriet, and it's gonna be amazing. Um, he's gonna go looking for telephones, and he's like, "Alfred, I prefer red." It's gonna be really, really fun. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be great. If there is like an aunt Harriet. I'll pop and, and give you props on that one. It was, holy crap! If they, if they if they even introduce the character named Harriet, I'm taking full credit. For Hi, it. I'm Harriet. You know, I I'm I'm marking out at the Doctor Leah Tompkins. You know, Leslie. Leslie. I thought it was Leah. Yeah. Leslie? Yeah, no, I think it's, it's Leslie. Leslie. Yeah. That's right. But yeah, I mean, Gotham's still not my favorite show on TV, but it's right. keeping me watching. I stopped watching Constantine, so. Oh, that's a shame. I like it. I mean, it's not the best show, but I, I really hope it keeps around to see what they what they do with it. So. Yeah. Awesome. Well, on that point, and I'll turn that thing off. There you go. Um, on that point, uh, well, well, thanks, Mike. Uh, for joining me here, talking some movies, uh, Malengo. He's uh, at Rambling Mango on the uh, at the Rambling. Wait, what is he? Uh, at Rambling Mango on the Twitter. Uh, Mike, you're you're at Mad Mike four eight eight three, of course. Yeah. And I'm at Sorgatron. So much going on at SorgatronMedia.com. Of course, the website for this is ThatRamblingReview.com. Thanks to our uh, uh, pizza sponsor of the show, Helping Lengo, as he's heading out the door. Slice on Broadway. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com. And follow him on uh, Slice underscore PGH. Let them know you heard about him on the ram- uh, the Rambling Movie Minutes. And uh, with that, um, uh, have a Rambling Movie Week. <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. 